Hi, Subby friends, Pink Girly here. Today with this video, I just wanted to share a little bit of my journey with learning to draw. When I was a young gal, I always liked to color and I liked the idea of possibly being artistic and drawing, but felt like I never would be able to do that, that I didn't have any talent or skill in that area. And so I learned to knit. And then as uh, a young adult, I toyed with some oil paint. And I enjoyed that, but really didn't do anything outstanding there. And then as I got older and had my family, I started to dabble a little bit more in what I would call the art world, but still never felt that I had any talent you know or natural talent to to draw and so I then um, started to dabble in like folk art type painting and not even so much tall painting but trying to learn some painting strokes they did some Donna Dewberry's things and certainly enjoyed the whole process but really no confidence and really didn't feel like I was making a whole lot of progress, you know. So fast forward until I'm much, much older and uh, my husband and I moved to New Jersey and um, our family is all in Pennsylvania and I had just um, retired. And so I had some extra time on my hand and I discovered YouTube and started to watch uh, some YouTube videos and happened upon uh, a gal by the name of Dee Dee Willingham. And uh, I was watching her draw. She's quite talented. And she started to talk about this book, Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain by Betty Edwards. And it's an older book. I'm sure it's been published several times. I don't have the workbook. Uh, I just purchased this. I didn't know about the workbook when I went ahead and purchased this. And so I started to go through this book. I'm not finished it yet. I'm really not a reader and I get going and then I, I, I tend to um, branch off into different things. But I'm still, my goal is to finish the book, but I'm not finished with the book yet. But I'm finished enough to know and to believe that drawing and having the ability to draw is a learned skill, like a lot of other skills. Are there people naturally talented in this area? Of course. Am I one of them? No. But I have a passion and a desire to learn. And so I have been working towards learning how to draw. And in particular, I enjoy drawing eyes. I would love to be able at some point to do a face, a portrait face, to be able to draw or paint my grandchildren. I am not there yet. But I can draw a pair of eyes and I can do a mouth. Um, hair is very still very difficult for me. But with practice, I'm sure I will make improvements as I have with drawing eyes and other simple things. So I thought I would do this video by way of uh, encouraging you that if you feel like you would like to draw or learn to draw, but you don't feel like you have any talent in that area, don't be discouraged. If I can do it and make progress, you can do it. I certainly have not arrived, but I am making progress. And so I am going out on a limb and I am going to really reveal some of my not so great <laughs> drawings to then show you that I am improving and then I thought I would um, I've given myself a challenge there's a lot of challenges in the art world on YouTube and one of them is uh, 100 eyes so I'm not with a group or anything I just challenged myself that I am going to draw 100 eyes whether they're a pair of eyes or one single eye I'm going to draw 100 eyes. And so I've started that challenge. So I'm going to show you what I've, I've done so far. But <clears throat> I encourage you to get this book. Uh, I got it for really not a lot of money on, uh, I think, eBay. 
uh, and I'm sure there are other discount places. There's like Thrift Books. I get a lot of books from them. Abe Books Online, uh, where you know you can pick up a used copy, um, and then go through it because this is this is really this will open up your mind about your drawing abilities and skills. And so one of the assignments in that book, now I, I am trying to now date things. And this is dated August of 2018. And I think the assignment was to draw a person laying flat. So if you can see my, my person laying flat, it's um, very childlike and really not good. And then let's see. What else do I have here? Oh, then we had to draw. Let's see. This is the same time frame, August, that I have here. That this is so pathetic. <laughs> but I, you had to draw a person. So this was my person. Let me see if I can. She's a very sad looking person and then you had to draw uh, something that you were looking at so this is my hand uh, you can tell it's a hand but again not so good and then one of the assignments uh, where you had to make the same shapes opposite of each other and if you look closely it's really kind of looks like a vase they look like two faces but then if you discount the, the faces and look in the center, it's kind of like a goblet or a, or a vase. And then she has you do an assignment where you draw upside down. There's a picture in the book. Oh, I should have looked that up. I didn't think to mark that page. Let's see if I can find this, this guy. Here he is. So this is what you're supposed to draw. And you're supposed to attempt to draw it upside down. So that's my version. And real, I mean, that's really not so bad, really. You can tell it's supposed to be that picture. So when I did that, still August of 2018, uh, I, I thought, well, you know, you're starting to make a little progress. This was another assignment. I'm not quite sure what that one was. And then I started to mess around with some other things. This is October. Mouths are very difficult for me. And then I tried just some basic shapes. And these were supposed to be little pastries or desserts, like a coloring book style. That was September. This is October. Yeah, let's see. And then I started, uh, again, this one's not dated. Not even on the back. But another hand, I think this is supposed to be my fingers. And then an eye. And some lips. So that eye is a lot better than the eyes on this poor chick. All right, so we've got that. Of course, that's not dated. And then here, this is, again, October 2018. And I have a pepper and then a plant. You can tell what they are. And October, in my hand, I'm holding a pencil sharpener. So that's a little better. Starting to see a little improvement. And then I worked on a, my foot. I don't think there's too much more in here that has to do with the book. That's not dated. I started to try to work on some hair. And so I just practiced on and off. I've got sketchbooks, you know, all over. I think that's all that's in here. Oh, then I did this one. Yeah, I've got to paper clip this. Of course, this is shapes. Now, this is now fast forwarding to May 2019. Shapes and some shadowing. 
so that's better. But for some reason, I just really like to draw eyes. And so then this is um, May 2019. And I saw this face online. And, you know, tried to, it's not a, pers a portrait of a person, but I did copy from a picture that I found online. So that's, I think, an improvement to what I started out as. So I'm just sticking with it. And I've challenged myself to do 100 eyes. And this is my 100 eye book. And so, let me see. I got a little bit of a glare from the graph. Yeah, pencil. So I'm using just pencil. I uh, tried to not do heavy strokes initially. And then I'm using like a 4B. I don't even, you know, I don't even know the different strengths or what the pencils are that you should possibly be using. I just bought a pack of pencils from watching YouTube videos. You know, they have B and they have HB and 4B. So I just bought a pack, sharpened them up. And then I eventually bought, uh, I call them a stump, but I think they're called like tortillions or something like this. It's just like rolled paper that you can smudge and do some shadowing with. But if you don't have those, um, a lot of videos online will tell you use a, a Q-tip or you could use a, um, a, a, a tissue. And so here's a pair of eyes looking up. And I always need a reference for this type of thing. If I'm just going to draw a pair of eyes like this, I just drew the eyes, and did them the way that I wanted. But if I want a specific look, I have to have a reference. These I'm not too thrilled with. These are supposed to be cartoon type eyes. And I decided to put some color on these. This I used a reference, and this is a teardrop. Hopefully you can see that there. And this I also used a reference. And these are all recent, within a couple of days. These are supposed to be a younger person's eyes. I'm not sure that they really look too much like a kid, but I think my camera's at a funny angle. Uh, these I was just trying to make it look like some wrinkles or some bags underneath. I think I could have done a little better with some highlights in the iris part. These got a little crossed. Not sure that's what I was going for, but that's how they ended up. And these are closed. I just wrote Dreamland on the lids. And then a wink. And then I did this one earlier today. Uh, now this is, I found this online. I've done this one of, uh, several times. I have a, um, oh, I should have pulled that out to show you. I have a ledger where I'm drawing eyes. And then I'm taking the eyes that I draw on my ledger and making a collage piece, mixed media art piece out of it. So I drew these eyes. And uh, I started the book in 2019, so I made sure I had the date up here. And then I put November. And um, just whatever. I start drawing some eyes, and then there's a lot. If I, if, well, I was going to shows and selling things, you know, at my craft fairs, I would take my ledger book and just draw my eyes. And I've got plenty of pages left to draw eyes and then I'm collecting things to then go ahead and put around the eyes. 
see. I've got a couple other ones done in here somewhere. See, this one's partially done. I have one page of lips. Uh, I need to find some more red roses and then finish this one up. This I want to put some words on here yet, but I'm just not sure what words I want to put. But you can see I just did a variety of eyes. These were just out of my head. These were not uh, looking at a reference or anything. But I'm not an expert. I'm just having fun. And people say to me, why eyes? I don't know. I just like, I just like to draw them. So this one, I saw this type of background somewhere. I thought, oh, well, let me try that. So I did that around my eyes and then found watches out of magazines and thought, oh, they might look cute and kind of mimic underwater sea life. So that's that one. This I found this image online somewhere. I'm just starting to color that in. Uh, but this was back in October 2019. I'm trying to do better with dating. Um when I do them, but I don't always remember to do that. So this, I drew the Santa, didn't copy him, I just drew him, and then just added some other things to the page. I drew the berries and the holly down here, and then just added things that I liked out of my stash for that one. I have one more done somewhere in here. Uh, I think there's a little gal that I did. I forgot all about this one. Here we go. This is mimicked off of, I have a coloring book by um, Emmanuel Colon, I think her name is. And it's called um, Wild Coleridge or Coleridge Wild. Anyway, I mimicked and um, drew from one of her, the, the books are beautiful, one of her images and then stamped around it and put the flowers on. This is one of my prized possessions. <laughs> so I just wanted to take a few minutes and just show you how I draw my eyes and I'm just having fun and like I said, I am not an expert, but I'm learning. Um, if you get the drawing from the right side of your brain book, you will soon, soon discover that it's in your eyes. Drawing is mostly in your eyes and how you see. Not to draw what you think you see, but to really look at what you see and draw it. So when I draw eyes and I'm looking at it, that's one thing. You know, looking at a sample. But when I just draw a pair of eyes, I just do whatever. And so I start out with a lighter lead pencil so I'm guessing I've been using this little mechanical pencil and this is a, a graph gear 500. It's a 0.5 made by Pentel, but you know what? A lot of times I just use a pencil from the dollar store, paper mate, you know, mechanical pencil. And I like these because you don't have to sharpen them. Although these other pencils I do. So, I mean, it's a catch, you know, it's whatever. Um, I have not gotten to the place where I can draw a pair of eyes with an ink pen. So I do everything in pencil. I like to erase. So I'm just going to make a couple of little shapes. Now they say you should have the same distance between... Um, the eyes, the same distance as the eye, but I don't always do that. But there again, I'm not drawing a portrait eye, you know, anybody in particular, I'm just drawing. 
and I did bring my camera down. Someday I'm going to figure out how to really use my Zoom, but I can't get it to, to work. So I want to be as light as I can at this point because I'm going to, you know, be smudging that and trying to shade. So they're not too bad. And sometimes I turn my, my paper around every which way. And sometimes I make them more round or more almond shape. And my husband just started to cut the grass. So uh, I'm not opposed to just, you know, turning your paper the way that you need to turn it. And usually what I do is spend at least a half an hour every night drawing something. Uh, right now it's eyes because I have my 100 eye challenge going. And once I do that, I try to put in another little line that will be the eyelid. Sometimes I bring it all the way across the eye and other times I just do a little bit on the sides. And if you look at a human people, I mean, their our eyes are not identical. Our eyes are all different, so it does. They don't have to be perfect. So then I just go in and I start making a round iris portion in the eye. Sometimes I bring it all the way down to that bottom ledge, and other times I don't. It just depends on what I feel like. Of course, if I was looking at an image out that I was trying to copy, they, they look like a little flat on the top to me. And for this one, I think I'm going to do, let me do a pupil in the center. So I'm just going to lightly put that in. And then usually there's a little, you know, you have that little corner spot there. So I'll just pencil that in. And then usually over here as well, your eyeball kind of comes out to that point. And then I've been trying to put in just a little guideline of that lip or that edge where your bottom eyelashes come out. And I found, I think it was at the supermarket, these white Pentel, I think they're Pentel um, erasers, which I really like. And then, of course, I have a Nita Bowl eraser, too. That kind of tends to really look grimy after a while. But it's really good to take off extra. And I just, I just tore off a little piece of mine. But you can find these online. You can find them. Uh, probably Walmart has them. And, um, you know, if you're new to any kind of drawing, you may not know what this is, but it's usually just in a square. And uh, you just knead it and make it soft. And then you can shape it and point it to fit in and take out. I mean, it really does, without much pressure, take out a lot of the lead. And then I have to think about eyebrows. So I usually have a hard time getting these to, oh, I didn't want it to be that way. Um, to be even from one side to the other. And I often forget that there's really not a whole lot of space between your eyelid and um, your eyebrow. I feel like I'm being watched. <laughs> so I'm just going to maybe make that straight and go down this way. And then trying to get this one to look somewhat the same. But there again, you know, our eyes are different. They're not always the same. 
and then from here I just go in and I start coloring in with some heavier um, lead pencil. This is a 6B, so that's a darker. I usually start out with the 4B, and I usually uh, color in my pupil because then I can take some of the graphite from there to help shadow and shade in the rest of my eye. And I try to keep that as round as I can, but I guess you could use a um, something to trace it or trace around. But if you look at your your work upside down, a lot of times you can see where where it's off. So I'm just going to flip this upside down and round this out a little bit. And then for me, it just depends on, I mean, there's, for me, there's no rhyme or reason. Now, like I said, you can find thousands and thousands of videos on YouTube on how to do this. You can either watch a video or you can uh, find uh, a 10 step or five step directions on, on how to draw eyes. But I'm just going to smudge out this. Outline of this eyeball. Now there's also a gal on YouTube. Her name is Kathy Arbor. And that's A-R-B-O-U-R. -R. She's from Canada. And she is an artist. And she is um, a trained artist. And she's got... A lot of wonderful videos on YouTube where she teaches you how to draw a lot of different things. And in one of her videos, she talks about smudging and bringing some color around the edge of the eye on this outer edge here. And I always do that because Kathy said so. Just kind of uh, brings it in. I don't know if she would describe it that way, but then I usually darken those little corner spots and the little divot spot there. And then I'll take some color from the center pupil area and just start smudging that around. Now, sometimes I fuss around with um, lines in the eyes, but today I'm just going to try to do something really simple. I'm already at a half an hour, so I don't really want this video to be too, too, too long. I always say that, and then it ends up being longer than I want. And then I come in with a heavier pencil, and I just start darkening some of my lines. I usually do the outside edge. And then I'll add some additional color, and I want it to be darker on the inside here of the iris. So I'll just start scribbling in really just some color. Well, I say color, but it, it's just some extra graphite. I think you call, they call it graphite or lead. And then I come back with my little stump. And then I usually try to leave a little bit of a highlight area on the right side of the iris, I mean the pupil. And um, But you can always take your kneaded eraser and you just kind of pounce it in there and it's it really nicely picks up that darkness. And then a lot of times I'll come over into the white to kind of make like a shadow. And sometimes they make this little, the little corner of the eye a little more pronounced than other times. And sometimes I'll take a colored pencil and um, 
put some color in the iris. And then I try to create a little bit of a shadow down here. Sometimes I'll do more or put a couple of lines because I'm trying to create an older eye or make it look like it's, you know, baggy. And I'm just working that graphite just out. And then I want to get up under the eye brow. I try to leave the eyelid part as light as I can, especially the center, like this area here. And then before I'm done, I usually take a black marker and really deepen the pupil area because I want that really dark. And then I'll start putting in the eyebrow just so I can have a look at what it's starting to look like. And then as I add more pencil and deepen this line, I kind of just try to smudge out that color. Sometimes I'll bring it down and just kind of give a hint the side of the nose. And sometimes I'll go like this, you know, to make it look like, it, you know, where his nose is going to start. And then I've got another six, a number six. Um, it's called 6B. And this is darker still. Well, I've got something here. This is called a layout pencil, but I think this is pretty dark. So I, I've been using this a little bit. I got this in a different set and I forgot I had it for the pupil. But see, it's still not, it's still not very dark. And then just like coloring, if you are, if you color at all, you know, you're just going to try to gradually bring in that color and start from the dark edge and then, you know, bring it out. Just so you have some contrast. And then I make sure my pencil is sharpened very well. And I usually use the number four B and I just start. Uh, popping in little curved lines, putting them close together. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. And sometimes I just make longer strokes or I put some down here where it looks like, you know, the person did not, especially if it's a woman or a girl, that they didn't pluck their eyebrows. Just little short strokes. You kind of like put your pencil down and when you, you drag and pull up, it gives almost like a little flick. And sometimes you might have to just sharpen your pencil a couple times too when you're trying to do the eyebrow. And then I kind of flatten them out. But And you can color them in too like I did on this one. Now these are kind of squared off. But they don't have to be squared off. You can do them round. You know, I just drew the shape and then just colored it all in. So you can do, oh, my husband's weed whacking. I'm sure you can probably hear that. And then I'll just do a real light stroke around there and just kind of ease that out. And then add a little darker line. And I've been deepening up like where, say, like where a girl would put eyeliner. 
And sometimes I'll bring a tail out. Just depends on what I feel like doing. I'm trying to keep this fairly simple. And then I start putting in my... Oh, excuse my arm. My uh, eyelashes. And again, they're just little strokes. You start and I just pull them down. Try to make them different sizes, make some crooked. My pencil point broke. So they're not getting, they're not as um, clean of a stroke as I might like to have. My biggest issue in all of this really is the pencil sharpener. If you use an electric sharpener, it just grinds up your pencils and you just use so much. Um, and then the little cheaper ones, some of those work pretty well. But then the blade goes dull and I just throw them out. I personally couldn't be bothered with changing the blade of a pencil sharpener. And then once I get some eyelashes in, I'll just start to lightly smudge where they attach to the eye. I don't know if you can see those. I have a hard time seeing like an... Ah, oh, there we go. Sweet spot. And then I do more of the same now at the top. But you have to decide, do you want big lashes that are going to really whip up there? Or most lashes, if you look at people's eyes, they just come just a little bit past that fold where the eyelid would be. I usually start in the center. And sometimes I make them full or put eye like an eyeliner. But you want them curved. You want some crooked because that's how they are. You don't want straight stick eyelashes. At least not if you want them to look, you know, more natural. And then they get smaller as they, in general, they usually get smaller as they go down. The eye. Make a couple bigger ones in the center. It's your eye, so really do what you want. Let's see if I can find that sweet spot again. Here we go. All right. And then you can put as much color as you want. Deepen this up. Use colored pencil. Um, I've used acrylic paint. You can use watercolor. Whatever you want. Whatever you want. Like I say, I try to keep this light in here for highlight. And then you need some kind of highlight in the pupil. And so... There again, I use, now this, I just pulled this out because I have it sitting here. This is just um, a marker to do brush lettering with. So it's kind of like a, a paintbrush. I try not to talk when I do this so I can get my circle fairly neat. And then you could take a really thin marker and do your eyelashes. Um, let's see. I got this at Hobby Lobby. I wish I had picked up more because I think they were, I don't know if they were on clearance. This is a fabulous little pen. This is a 0.25 by Pentel. Slicey, Slicey? I don't know, S-L-I-C-C-I. -C -C -I. Love it. 
but you could come in here and put a couple of, you know, marks in and around your eyelashes. Just darkens them up, makes them look a little thicker. You don't have to do that, but or if you want to put a little liner down here. You can do that. Or sometimes I take like a brush marker. Put like an eyeliner type of look. Now, if you're if you're working from a sample or a a picture that you're working from and it doesn't have that, you wouldn't put it on there. And then you want the center of the eye, if you use a marker of some kind, to dry before you come at it with a white gel pen or paint pen or a paintbrush. Um, this is an off-brand, I think it's off-brand Flymax. I bought a bunch of these. This is a 0.7. And as you can see, I've written on my hand here because a lot of times I use this on different surfaces and it picks up some of the paint. So the last time it was blue. And then you just, um, you know, pop in where you want your highlight. And then you want it to dry. I put some additional highlighting here. And you can sometimes color, and let's see, I got the black from there, and then I smudged it here. Now I'm really making a mess. I don't think that's going to come up. So, I'm going to dry this here. He gun. a nice white paint pen. Posca pens are pretty nice. Uh, but I sometimes struggle with those as well. People tell me there's a Sig Sigma, Sigma, Sigma paint pen that's pretty good. Or a gel pen in white. But Posca, they have all different colors and they have different size nibs. And I use this sometimes to color in my pupil but I'm not getting this real white today. Of course, when you do a video, things never seem to go as you hope. I don't know if I can cover that up a little bit. Let me see if I can try that. You know, that'll bother me. So what I'm going to do, and then you just do this. I do the same thing. Of course, when I'm doing this by myself, I do them both together. But I don't want the video to be an hour and a half long. So that bothers me. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to put a little heart in her eye. And there you have it. So I hope this is an encouragement to you. And I hope you feel as though maybe you would um, 
step out and maybe try to draw something that you like. Could be a flower, could be a bumblebee, could be eyes, could be noses, could be a lip, teeth. We all have different likes, but we can all learn is my point. And I'm hoping that you're encouraged that if you've had a desire to draw and think that you can't, you can. You can learn. There's lots of helps out there on the internet. And so I would love to know if you would leave me a message, leave me a thumbs up. Let me know if you're going to start to draw or if you draw, post some pictures that we can see would be fabulous. Thank you for watching the video. And don't forget, take time to be creative. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.